The Austin housing market is in for a bit of a shock. Jeremy Knight, the Knight Group, your favorite Austin realtor. Look, the Austin housing numbers came out. And while there's a lot of interesting things on here, there's some things that we definitely need to address if you are going to be buying or selling in 2023. And uh, definitely pay attention to the end of this video because I'm going to go through and give you as a buyer and a seller some information that might help you navigate this um, storm. And drop a comment below. You've seen the information probably by now what's going on with SV Bank and all the other stuff happening in the market. I do want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on that? Here we go. Okay, the biggest thing that came out from the information here from the February numbers is that number one, we had more sales, which is great. The downside is days on market for the Austin area went to 84 days on market. If we look at this chart and go back to like 2018, 2019 and into 2020, before we saw a huge drop due to the pandemic, we saw average days on market around 70 days on market. In fact, up until January, we are kind of hitting our peak from those 2018, 2019 numbers. If we look at 2023, we're at 84 days on market for the Austin MSA. Now, when I go through these slides and I usually talk about this, I usually talk about Austin specific. The data is a little bit more manageable and it's easier for me to kind of calculate. But somebody pointed out the other day that I said that month over month, Austin is up. It went from 525 up to 530. But if we look at the MSA, which I don't talk about the MSA as much because you have a lot of volatility. Like if you look at Georgetown, Leander, Cedar Park, or if there's so much inventory that hits the market and inventory is what we're gonna talk about next, then you're gonna see numbers kind of change. And if we look at the numbers for month over month numbers, last year we saw a high of 555. We went from January at 450 down to 436 in February. And there's some reasons for that. I bet you wanna know why, or I'm actually, if you're a fan of this channel, you probably know why we saw a drop in the MSA. But overall for Austin, it's true. Austin, we didn't see that big of a drop. In fact, prices went up in the Austin proper. The areas around Austin are struggling. In fact, if we look at the numbers for month over month from January to February, if you look at like Leander Cedar Park, they break this up in, as a community impact area. You went from 499 down to 480 for Leander Cedar Park. If we look at Northwest Austin, it dropped 20 grand from 490 to 470. If we look at Round Rock, Pflugerville, Hutto area, it went from 435 all the way down to 399. San Marcos, 390 down to 340. But if you look at Southwest Austin, Southwest Austin actually went up. It went from 537 to 550. So it's just showing you that these trend lines are right. We have a lot of inventory on the periphery of Austin, which is causing, so the suburbs, which is causing the prices on the outside to drop. Now, one of the other reasons why we're still seeing more inventory hit and maybe not move as quickly in these suburbs, obviously, is that the suburbs is where you go to get affordability. And with interest rates hitting 7% up until last week, you see people stop buying as much in those areas because look, let's be honest, those numbers I just gave you are above the median range. The median for the US is about 428. All of those areas except for San Marcos were above the median for just the USA in general. And so that is a problem. Now let's look at back at the numbers because there's a lot of things I wanna talk about this number and we, we will get into the inventory. But if you look at the Austin area, from January to February, we did see more closed sales. But if you look at the graphic, 75 days on market, that is an increase from 62 days on market. That is going to be a problem. More active listings, but barely active listings went from 1760 to 1778. So Austin's a little more insulated than these outside areas because there's just a little less on the market. In fact, if we look at the overall MSA is about 7,900 units. And as I look at the MLS today over the last seven days, we have just as many homes going under contract as we do listing. So that's not gonna help us bring down the inventory. Now, I know what a lot of people are saying around the US is that inventory is so low, inventory is so low. And I agree, inventory around the US is quite low. But Austin's finally catching up to the inventory that we needed two years ago. Now look, over the last two years, let's be honest, prices went up because there's a lack of inventory and interest rates were so low. Now Austin's starting to catch up and we're seeing it in these numbers. 
But here's something else I wanna talk about. New inventory as far as new listings is about even between the MSA and also the Austin area. So those are two things to look at. Pending sales show they're down year over year. But if you look at month over month, pending sales stayed the same in Austin. Pending sales in the MSA dropped a little bit. So the areas around Austin are starting to see pretty significant price drops. And what is the reason for that? And that's inventory. There's a lot of new construction on the market. If I just pulled the numbers and it looks like out of the 7,900 available homes in our five market MSA, so Caldwell County, Bastrop, Hayes, Williamson, and Travis County, we're about 7,900 units. 3,100 of those are new construction, which means 40% of our actual inventory is new construction. So all these builders that we're building up and trying to catch up are now kind of finally caught up thanks to supply chain getting better, yet that is causing prices to come down. So that has been a concern over the last few years as far as like, will this inventory start to drop the market? Well, I think you have inventory as one of those issues. Interest rates, which over the last week with the SVB Bank, drop a comment below if you got anything you want to say about the SV Bank issue and should we be bailing out SV Bank? Should we not be bailing out SV Bank? It's already been done, but what are your thoughts? There's arguments saying that we should not have bailed out SV Bank and just let it crash. What do you say? I want to hear from you. But because of that, interest rates in the bond market have gone crazy. And so we saw interest rates come down from the sevens into about the 6.55 range, which is probably going to spur some people to jump back into the market. So look, I know a lot of people want to say in the comments that I'm just a realtor. I'm here to sell you information or sell you. I'm just giving you the data and what I'm seeing. I know a lot of people think, you know, don't listen to realtors because realtors just want to sell you something. I think there is some value in boots on the ground, whether you're listening to multiple channels or multiple things. I think it's important to hear what realtors have to say and then take that and listen to everybody else as well. Yet, I can tell you from the last few days, I just put one listing on the market last week. We are under contract as of today. I have another one that just hit the market. I have people lined up through the door on that property. So it is showing you that there are buyers back in the pool. Now, is that gonna be the same? Look, the spring timeframe is when we see the numbers really where people start buying heavily. I don't think this spring is gonna be that same spring. I think a lot of buyers in which a lot of investors I've talked to are looking at targeting towards the end of the year. So if you're a buyer or you know thinking about buying, are you gonna wait towards the end of the year? Now sellers, it's really important that you still price right. I've said that in so many videos. It's very important that you price right, but I do wanna finish up the information on this. One thing that's really interesting, I did talk about inventory. If you look at the months of inventory for the MSA, because now we're gonna talk about the MSA, I guess, it went from 2.7 in January and dropped down to 2.6 in February. So the overall, that just shows you that there are more people out there buying. Yet what we're seeing is a lot more new build inventory, but we're still seeing more people purchase. But then if we look at Austin, as far as months of inventory, nothing really changed between January and February, and partly to do with the fact that we saw uptick in inventory, but also an uptick of buyers buying in Austin. So it stayed exactly the same. Now, I think over the next three months, this is gonna change. I think we're gonna see a lot more inventory hitting the market. A lot of sellers are starting to panic. Look, it's a springtime. So a lot of sellers think that they're gonna get a better deal putting their homes on the market. I know in my neighborhood in Dripping Springs, there's like five new listings just this week. So we are going to see more inventory hitting the market, which is gonna prevent us from seeing crazy huge price increases. And let me show you what I mean. Here is the MSA information for last year. You saw from 476, it jumped up to 550 by April. And if we look at the Austin numbers, we went from 550 last year to 565. And then in March, we saw a gigantic jump to 624. And that's right, we are down 6% currently. And if you pay attention to one of my last videos, I said we would start to see larger and larger negative numbers. We're down 6%. Next month, I think, what did I say? We'd be down nine to 12%. So March numbers are probably gonna be significantly higher because we are not gonna hit 565 going into March or going into March numbers. I mean, what do you think about that? Drop a comment below. But overall, we are gonna start seeing larger negative numbers. 
So my suggestion to anybody looking to buy or sell right now, if you're looking to buy, be patient, look at the rates, make sure the home you're purchasing is the right home for you because one of the biggest things that people said during the pandemic is they had a little bit of regret from the homes that they purchased in 2020, 2021, and 2022 because they were so rushed. Now you have the opportunity to shop a little bit, so definitely do that. Sellers, make sure you are pricing the home correctly because those buyers that are looking, they are not gonna jump on that price if you're sitting on the market. So there you go, Jeremy Knight the Knight Group. What do you think? Drop a comment below, but yeah, Austin numbers went up, MSA numbers went down. What do you think?